announce that we have two grants for $1.2 million that will go towards a new way of looking at the Greece site. As many of you know, in the fog part on oils, we already have programs for picking up oil from restaurants. We have over 600 restaurants in San Francisco signed up to our Grease Recycle, Grease Cycle program. And we pick up the oil, we bring it in, and we bring it over to the East Bay, and we recycle that into biodiesel, which, which we then blend into our fuel in San Francisco. Um, we were out in Chinatown last week, and one of the people out in Chinatown in a restaurant said that it saves him $100 a week that he used to spend on paying someone to pick up that oil, and now it's free, and it's used for good purposes. But what we weren't picking up before was the grease part of it, and the grease is much more, um, has much more possibilities, but people have been trying in different ways to really figure out how to make that into biodiesel and other purposes, and this is a pilot program that will really focus on, the, on what we call the brown grease, not the yellow oil. Um, today, first up to talk about that is our mayor, Mayor Newsom. And former, actually, <laughs> thanks. Uh, well, thank you all very much for being out here, and uh, thank you to Ed Harrington and his team uh, for continuing the work that began in November of 2007 uh, when we initiated the San Francisco Grease Cycle Program uh, to a lot of interest and fanfare. At the time, we had uh, committed ourselves through an executive order in 2006 to convert our entire diesel fleet to biodiesel, or B20. Uh, we initiated that uh, while... Uh, for well over a year, but we were running into some other types of traps, and that was resourcing some of that B20. And the Grease Cycle program became a new resource for us to advance our B20 goals, which ultimately we have prevailed in doing. And I don't know of another city in the United States of America that has converted its entire diesel fleet to B20. B20 is not all the way there, incidentally. I don't want to get too enthusiastic about it. The bar is still pretty low, but the fact that we have already done that and initiated it is suggestive of how far this city has gone. But as you know, and we all recognize, good enough never is. And so we're now initiating, as Ed said, this next phase. As a restaurateur, uh, someone who's literally developed nine restaurants, uh, I'm intimately familiar with what you see in my right hand. Um, and that's this muck. Uh, that we somehow have to dispose of. You don't dispose of it every night. You don't necessarily throw it down uh, the drain. As Ed said, those that do pay a great price. The taxpayers do and the restaurants themselves as those sewers back up. So you put it in a big vat and you try desperately to find a place to leave it for a week or two and then have someone dispose of it. What inevitably happens is it starts smelling. You start seeing flies all around it. It's sticky and ugly and disgusting, um, and it usually contaminates things that are around it. So even if you're running the best operation imaginable, this is the kind of thing that you hide from all of your customers and even your own staff. Uh, if you're running in a huge restaurant, uh, then you're running up some bills as well to dispose of it. Uh, some restaurants, every month they pick up that big vat, others every two weeks. And as Ed was referring to, there's some restaurants that every single week have a hauler come in because they're producing so much product that they ultimately have to dispose of it. It's a big cost sector. If it's $100 a week to a business, 400 a month, that's four, dollars $5,000 a year. Uh, for some restaurants. That's a big cost factor. And as you know, $5,000, you've got to gross twenty-five dollars to $30,000 in order to net the $5,000. And I'm being generous on food cost margins, but at the end of the day, in operating a restaurant, you're going to need to gross a lot more of that just to pay for the grease pickup. Uh, and we're not in the business right now of making a case that we're seeing a lot of increased gross revenue for our business. We're actually seeing a decrease. So taking things from the bottom line, costs from a bottom line of a business, um, is a big deal. And so we think the timing of this couldn't be better in the context of the recession, uh, not just in the context of our evolution to the next phase of our grease cycle efforts. We're blessed to have black gold uh, biofuels producing uh, this new uh, plant out uh, near the zoo. Uh, they're also partnered with URS uh, that will be our private sector partners making this the first commercially viable brown grease um, uh, producing plant uh, or conversion plant of its type in the United States of America. 
uh, once again leading the way. We couldn't do this without the California Energy Commission, and we couldn't do this without the EPA. And so we want to thank them for the $1.2 million, a $1 million grant, another $200,000 grant in order to get us there. The ultimate idea is that brown grease, and by the way, at home, you know this when you're doing eggs or something, and it burns, and you get all that brown stuff, and you kind of scrape it off. And what do you do with it? I assume you recycle it and put it away. Most folks just kind of just dump it in there and ground it up. Um, that's what this, in essence, is. It's not exclusively that, but I think that brings it home to people. Uh, but ultimately, it becomes this, uh, which is commercial-grade biodiesel, uh, which is increasingly in demand. And it's the kind of biodiesel that is not the biodiesel that we're getting from corn stock uh, and from other food sources. It's waste sources. This is the good stuff, environmentally speaking. Uh, and this byproduct is negligible in terms of its environmental construct uh, and consequence. So, again, it, to me this is just a win-win-win, uh, and it's a way of showcasing new technologies, showcasing San Francisco's willingness to try new things. Uh, it's all about disruptive innovation. It's about uh, taking the status quo and dramatically altering it in a way that we think is aligned with all of our economic strategies as well as environmental strategies. And I'm here just to say thank you for all of our part to all of our partners and in particular to Ed Harrington and his team at the PUC. These guys get it and they're producing remarkable results and they truly have become the Public Utilities Commission, the envy of the rest of the state and nation. And for that, I'm very proud. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Newsom. We also want to hear today from Deborah Jordan, who's the Regional Director for AIR from the EPA. This is a pilot, as we've said, and when we do these things, we want others to learn from it. Their grant is going to be used to provide a toolkit to other agencies that can replicate the process we're working on. Deborah. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ed. I'm really honored to be here today to celebrate with all of you and to kick off this innovative project. I'm particularly pleased that the U.S. EPA can support the efforts of the City and County of San Francisco, along with the California Energy Commission and the National Biodiesel Board. President Obama has recently announced a plan called New Energy for America. The President's plan is aimed at reducing our dependence on foreign oil, cutting our greenhouse gas emissions, and creating millions of new green jobs. This project really is, an, I think, an excellent example of the President's call to increase our use of renewable energy sources while also addressing our climate change goals. And the goals of this particular project are really impressive. First, it improves air quality because the emissions from biodiesel of sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and fine particles are much lower than that of conventional petroleum diesel. Secondly, it improves water quality. Oh, diverting the oil and grease from the sewer systems is going to reduce sanit sanitary sewer overflows, thus helping water quality. And finally, what this project does is it diverts the oils and grease from going to our landfills, which I think we can all agree is a great environmental result. EPA is providing its grant, as Ed mentioned, um, in order to help pr develop a toolkit so that we can replicate this prog project across the state and across the country. And I also wanted to mention that our funding comes to the PUC through the West Coast Collaborative, which is a public-private partnership that supports clean diesel projects up and down the West Coast. So once again, congratulations on this great project. Before I close, I just want to mention Ed had said that we do call the waste, fats, oils, and grease fog. So this is our fog to biodiesel project. And I can't think of a better place in San Francisco to convert fog to biodiesel. So thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Um, next up, Ken Koyama, a manager with the California Energy Commission, is here because the whole point is we, uh, we avoid putting this into our sewer system, but we also create energy. And so the CEC is supporting this with a million dollar grant. Ken. Thank you. The California Energy Commission is very proud to be part of this project, contributing a million dollars to it. This project will go for, towards solving a lot of our petroleum dependence problems. In California, we use 16 billion gallons of gasoline every year, 3 billion gallons of diesel every year. We are over 90 percent dependent upon petroleum products for our transportation needs. And this project goes a long ways towards helping us overcome some of those issues. We also are need to develop uh, renewable fuels in a sustainable manner. With this project, produced with local feedstocks, produced on site, 
produced in the fleet that the, that the location is at goes a long ways towards meeting that sustainability goal. So we would hope that a lot of other jurisdictions take a look at this project, see how successful it is, perhaps use the model of, of San Francisco PUC to be able to uh, uh, use, use this system in their own fleets. And this will help, again, towards meeting our petroleum reduction goals. So thank you very much. We're looking forward to a very successful project in, in the future. And our last speaker is from the biodiesel community. If you don't know, I think many of you were there this week, but there is a conference that's just ending up in San Francisco. We had over 2,000 people here from the biodiesel community for a major conference in San Francisco. It's perfect timing for this announcement. Joe Job is the executive director of that organization. Joe. Well, thank you, everybody. I just first want to say thank you for hosting us in your city. We've had a fantastic conference. We want to thank uh, the city of San Francisco for sponsoring the weather for this conference. Uh, it was absolutely magnificent. Uh, the people were friendly. Everything was wonderful. The reason that we chose San Francisco uh, this year is because San Francisco is really an inspiration to the, the biodiesel community nationally and internationally. We had over 2,000 people here and visitors from over 30 countries. Uh, and and uh, what is going on in San Francisco is inspiring because of this. When you, when you work in alternative energy circles, uh, there, there is a, an unusual uh, factor. I call there, there's a lot of gunners in alternative energy. I call them gunners because they say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And... Uh, you know, the, the National Biodiesel Board headquarters is in, is in Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm a Missouri boy uh, from the Show Me State, uh, which probably is, is one of the silliest uh, state slogans I've ever heard. But it really is true because, uh, you know, we don't want gunners. We want people that are doing it. We want to see them do it. Uh, and and biodiesel is one of those things uh, that people can see and feel and touch and do. They can do it themselves right now in their communities. And that's the reason that uh, San Francisco is so inspiring because uh, it's leadership from the top and it's grassroots from the bottom and all sides and you know people aren't in this community aren't doing it because the mayor told them they had to do it they're they're with the mayor uh, the mayor told them they had to do it because they wanted to do it and it's so inspiring uh, and uh, you know I just want to mention that that because biodiesel is is uh, something that people can do now it really is one of the few uh, heavy-duty transportation fuels uh, that's actually working in the marketplace, and it's something that's driving innovation. Uh, it's it's driving this kind of new innovation for new feedstock development. You know, just just a quick reminder. Uh, you know, one of the reasons that biodiesel is such a great fuel is because uh, because plants are one of Mother Nature's preferred ways of harvesting CO2 and sunlight and storing it as energy. Uh, and and uh, so it's stimulating plant science research. It's stimulating uh, the availability to use the same acres of land uh, and, and grow more food and feed and fiber. Uh, and it's stimulating driving this kind of innovation. I want to commend URS and, and Black Gold, Gold Biofuels uh, for developing this. Uh, if you've got questions about the technology, I would encourage you to talk to these folks uh, about it. And uh, just, just finally, I, I want to uh, commend the mayor for all of his leadership. Uh, you know, we're here in, in one of the most diverse cities in the world, and, and uh, the biodiesel industry is one of the d most diverse industries in the world. We're not a regional thing. Uh, we're, we're all over the country uh, using different technologies and different local feedstocks uh, and all walks of life. You can go to our conference and see uh, bankers and farmers and businessmen, uh, and, it, and it really is inspirational. And so we wanted to... Uh, we have what we call the I Awards because all of the awards start with an I because we were very clever that way. Um, and uh, this year we've chosen uh, to receive the Initiative Award uh, to go uh, to Mayor Gavin Newsom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Photo. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. We're going to hire you. 
Um, and again, as Joe said, this wouldn't be possible without all the people you see up here, the black gold folks, the URS folks, it is a public par partnership with private people involved in it. We have people here from the Department of Energy and other, pla and other places that are also friends that we're working with. And so um, we are going to bring people back who want to see what this looks like in the kitchen. Before we do that, if there's any questions, we'd be happy to take them. What the grant money is being used for? A million dollars will be to actually build the pilot plant at the Oceanside Wastewater Treatment Plant, and 200,000 will be used for a toolkit that we can give to other people to let them replicate what's going on. Any? Is that the benefit of building next to a treatment plant? Number one, we own the space, <laughs> but also um, we are we are bringing our own trucks and vehicles into this discussion. We're doing pickups in restaurants and those kind of things, and that's where we tend to take a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the waste product anyway. And so it's a space we have available, and it fits and it works. The pilot will only cost this much money. The issue really will be when this goes out into full-fledged production, we have to then start to figure out from the pilot how much more we have to build to be able to really take all the, all the grease from all the restaurants. And when I, we keep saying restaurants, um, our oils program has started to involve regu regular residential customers in San Francisco. Over the holidays, we got over 1,000 gallons of cooking oil just from people bringing it in to our sites. Next weekend at the Chinatown Fair on the 7th and 8th, we'll have a booth out there. If people want to bring just the regular cooking oil from their homes, they can bring that to that booth, and we'll take it if it's packaged correctly, and we can talk about how to do that. But I mean, so we're, we're going to roll this out, but this is a pilot. I don't know that answer. Anybody else? Do you have an estimate for the pilot? Yeah. Pilot? So the pilot would, would, would pick up 10,000 gallons a day, five days a week. How much would come out of it? How much would come out of it? Feel free to come up if you'd like. Coming out of that, it'll yield approximately 5% grease. That's from the raw material coming out of the trap. Much of what goes into the trap is water. And so a lot of it is just steaming out the water, steaming out some of the, the real waste product. But we end up with biodiesel. We end up with fuel of a lower grade that we can use in our boilers. And we end up with a third level, which is really kind of available for methane gas production. So it comes out in different things, which is really the, the interesting part of this project, is that we're not trying to just get biodiesel and the rest of it going to waste. We're actually getting three different products out of it, so less goes to waste than any other group that has tried to do this before. We, are, we have the oils program right now. This facility will be starting to be constructed the end of this month, and it will be available later on this year. What are you doing with the brown grease right now? The brown grease right now is right now going, it's, it's t if you are a good restaurateur, you have it picked up on a regular basis, and it's, and it's being treated through the wastewater system the way you normally would, and the, any kind of other solid system we have. It is a process that really doesn't take advantage of the fact that there's energy available in that, in that what we think is a waste product. This allows it to be used for energy, and it removes it from going into the waste stream in a better way. And, all, and if it works like the oils program, by having us go out there for free to restaurants and hotels and pick it up, it really encourages people not to just let it slide into the sewer system and not care about it. And how many restaurants are not well, I think the vast majority do. But you can only get away with it so long. You're, you're, the pipes will only allow for you to dispose of this inappropriately for so long. I mean, it's one of the principal challenges for a restaurant is keeping their sewage and drains operational. And it's the one great regret, and it happens inevitably to every restaurateur, that they didn't pay enough attention to what goes down that drain. And once it backs up, and once your business is disrupted, and once you get that bill, you try to make sure it never happens again. Yeah. Well, but, but again, it, when, when, it, when it clogs up, oils and grease end up looking like cement in the sewer system. It takes a jackhammer to loosen it. And that's what, uh, that is the cause for about half the sewer system clogs in San Francisco. And that's why we say it costs us about $3.5 million. And so getting it out of that waste stream is very important to us. B before I forget, I also want to make sure that we thank Roe Restaurant and Danny for inviting us to use the space here today. So thank you. Thank you. We also will ha we'll have people here if they want to ask, ask questions. We have samples. We have folks who know more than I do that can talk about the details, and we can go in the back if you'd like to.